Basically, the way the law works is if you consume your income, you're going to pay tax on it. But if you reinvest the income, either in your business or in real estate or in agriculture or in energy or something that the government wants you to invest it in, then you're not going to pay taxes. And it's, it's that simple. Consume it, pay taxes, invest it, don't. Too many times as entrepreneurs ignore what's happening in the political world because we don't want to get dragged down into the mess. But more today than ever before, we need to have a voice. Otherwise, we're going to be left behind. I started Learn exactly for this reason. So starting today with Freedom Friday, let me be your voice. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? This is Onyx and all back with yet another episode of Freedom Friday, where we get just a little controversial and poke a little bit, you know, into some matters that are going on in the world. And today we've got a great topic, a one, a topic that drives a lot of emotion. But I want to get to the I want to get to the heart of it because I think that the politicians are using this topic to rally people and get them all crazy. But people don't actually understand the deeper essence of it. And what is that? I want to talk about how it is that the rich don't pay taxes. Here's the funny thing. There's two ways you can react to hearing that statement. You know, when you hear something to the tune of the rich don't pay taxes, right? Or everyone wants to know Donald Trump's taxes. I, I can tell you right now, he probably doesn't pay taxes. All right. So we can just we could skip ahead of that and agree to it. Now, that's going to make half the people go, how dare he? Oh, my God, let's you know burn everything. But people like me, the other side, here's what I say. How? <laughs> I don't get upset about it. I say, how does he not pay taxes? And it was my journey to discover the answer to this question that led me to today's guest, Tom Wheelwright. Not only is he my personal accountant, my CPA, my advisor, my wealth advisor, my tax advisor, but he also is that to some of the richest people in the world, including Robert Kiyosaki. He is the main guy Robert calls when it's time to talk about taxes. And his job is to help make sure his clients don't pay taxes. So, you know, we're going to find out how the heck he does it. And this is, I remember going to my accountant down the street, okay? Great guy. I love him to death. Uh, I call him uncle. I've known him forever. And I remember when I was making a couple million dollars a year, I, I said, listen, man, my, ta my, biggest, my tax bill once was over a million dollars. And I remember writing that check and I was like, hey, man, all the politicians are out there saying the rich don't pay taxes. My butt's paying taxes. What do they know that I don't? I went to my accountant and he said, nope, nope, nothing you can do. This is just what it is. And I asked him, why aren't they paying taxes? No, no, no. They do offshore. They do this. They do that. They do a bunch of scams and things you don't want to do. Don't get involved in that. And then that was the day I was telling the story and someone said, you need to talk to Tom Wilwright. And I got on the phone with him. And you know what? I've saved millions while helping the economy and doing good in the world. I'm not evil. I'm not evil, but I want Tom, Tom, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for, for, for even being willing to let me introduce you this way, because we know in, that, in our political environment, anyone that talks about not paying taxes is, is, is immediately, you know, evil, but you're not, you're an awesome guy. You're such a good person and you've helped me give back more, save on taxes, invest more. I mean, it's crazy, but Tom, what's going on, man? I mean, is it true the truly wealthy, the truly rich don't pay taxes? First of all, let's just establish. Is that kind of true? Well, it's kind of true. I mean, the, the reality is, is that um, they got good tax advisors. They understand the tax law. And if, as long as they're doing what the, the government tells them to do, they're going to be, they're, they're not going to be paying taxes. You know, that. so, the, the so sorry, I didn't mean to cut here. you off. Go ahead. The fundamental issue here is that people do not understand the the purpose of the tax law. People think the purpose of the tax law is to raise money for the government, and that is one purpose of the tax law. But that's like that's like one percent of the tax law. There's there's like one line that says all income's taxable unless we say it isn't. There's another line that says nothing's deductible unless we say it is. And then there's a few charts and tables that tells how much tax to pay. If if all it was if the tax law was just about raising the maximum amount of revenue, we'd have a 15 page tax code and we have a 6,000 page tax code. So the, the rest of the tax law is really just an instruction guide for what do you have to do 
to do what the government wants you to do so that you pay less taxes. Well, here's what the government figured out. Back in the 1960s, they did an experiment with the investment tax credit. And they said, look, if we give manufacturers an incentive through a tax benefit to reduce and, and in an incentive to buy more equipment, will they do that? And what they discovered was, yes, because people hate paying taxes. So a little bit of a tax incentive goes a very long way. Since then, the tax law has really just become, and this is, by the way, it's not just true in the U.S., it's true around the world. The tax law has become fundamentally a series of incentives. I and mean, incentives that the government wants you to do things a certain way. And if you do them, you get a tax break. If you invest in real estate, you get a tax break. If you invest in employees, you get a tax break. If you invest in war veterans, you get a tax break. If you invest in his, if you renovate historical um, houses, you get a, a tax break. There's all all these tax breaks. By the way, you know this is you're, you're right. Um, politicians use this so wrong because the politicians are the ones who put the tax put them in there in the first place, right? And they have control over it. So for them to say, look, you know, oh, Donald Trump doesn't pay tax. We need uh, Donald, Donald Trump's tax return. I have a fundamental issue with that. Do you want them to be able to get your tax return and put it on the on, on the web? No. I don't. No, I don't. I, I think this is a fundamental privacy issue and not just for Donald Trump, but for all of his partners, frankly. But but the point is, is that, look, it's not whether you pay tax or not. It's It's whether you cheat or not. What I find is, is that. It's typically the people who don't understand the incentives that cheat. It's the people who do understand the incentives. And those, by the way, are the rich because they have good tax advisors. Okay. They're doing, they're doing it right. They're, they're not cheating that for the most part. I, I, I don't, I don't believe they're cheating. I think they're just, and, and like you say, if Donald Trump were paying taxes, he'd have to have the worst tax advice in the world. And I'm sure he doesn't. Yeah. Well, so so here's something I want to establish really early, right? Because it's an you know the analogy that 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 the politicians set up is that if if you're not paying taxes, it's because you're gaming the system or doing something kind of nefarious or illegal. And the truth is, it's the exact opposite, correct? Like if if someone is wealthy and not paying taxes, it doesn't mean immediately that they're doing illegal things. No, let, let, let's take a, an example of somebody who's big in the news right now, Jeff Bezos, right? Okay, so Amazon, why, uh, uh, I can think of two, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, okay? Two guys I admire tremendously, right? Why don't they pay, why don't they pay taxes? Well, Amazon had huge multi-billion dollar losses for years and years. His, the investors in Amazon took huge, had to wait for years to get any kind of return. Well, all those losses, you're not going to compensate an entrepreneur for those losses. So they took the risk, which is all the government was saying is, look, if you take the risk, then when you do start turning a profit, well, those losses that you incurred in the earlier years, we're going to allow you to offset the income from later years. So that's the first thing that, that, that Bezos used. And the other one that both Bezos and Musk have used very well is the tax benefits for research and development. I mean, think about it. These two guys have completely changed the way we think about the world. Completely changed. The, uh, Bezos completely changed commerce, and, and Musk has completely changed the way we think about energy. And so what the government said is, look, if you take the risk to do that, then we're going to give you tax credits as well as tax deductions. Do you know, we actually have the least amount of research and development tax benefits of just about any country in the world. You, have, you go to Singapore and they get a 400% deduction. I mean, literally, you put in a dollar, you get a $4 deduction for research and development. You go to South Africa, you get a 150% deduction. So if you put in a dollar, you get a $1.50 deduction. Okay, we get a dollar for dollar deduction and a 6% and a credit. I mean, it's not that big of a, you know, the, the benefit here is very small compared to the rest of the world. But the point is, is that why are they doing that? Well, they're encouraging certain behavior. So I always say, I mean, you know, it's like you said, people always hear, hear this thing. Well, if you're not paying taxes, you're not patriotic. I'm going, I think it's just the opposite. I do. I, 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 I've done, I spent my whole life researching tax law. 
I believe if you're if you're paying high taxes, that means you're selfish, frankly. It means you're not doing what the government wants you to do, or you just have bad tax advice. I mean, you know, that that that's part of it too. But the reality is, is if you're doing what the government want, says says they want things they want you to do, like business, real estate, research, all that kind of stuff, you're just not going to be paying high taxes. It's just not there. Yeah. You know, it's um, it, it's crazy because when we first started working together, Tom, you told me this R&D credit. And I thought, what is this? This is crazy. Like, yeah, this is amazing because I'm I'm a tech company. I'm building a platform. And back then, Tom, if you remember, I had a huge offshore operation. I had a lot of developers in Europe and in India and in um, a couple other parts of the world. And I wasn't ridiculously happy with the development, but it was a lot less expensive. So you just kind of mess, you know, you just kind of deal with it. And then when we talked, you said, listen, there's this dollar for dollar R&D credit and, you know, but you can't apply it towards your international development. And I thought, well, first of all, that helps really reduce my cost of development and R&D here in the country. Well, long story short, if you skip ahead to today, uh, my entire development team, I have one person that's still offshore. The rest of it is all in the United States. So people might be getting upset that I'm getting a tax write-off every year for that, but I, am when it, I went out and employed six people that are making six-figure salaries because they're, they're really high-level developers because it was a possible for me to do because of that additional tax credit. It helped me nullify some of the additional savings like that I would get from offshore. Now I'm getting better quality work, I'm creating employment in the United States and I'm not outsourcing my work. Isn't that what in the end? Because then you have this thing, right, where you listen to the political debates and people will say, get rid of all these tax breaks, get rid of outsourcing, increase pay, increase wages. And it's like, OK, you could do all of that. But then I, as the entrepreneur, I'm, I'm going to throw in my hat and say, screw this. I'm going to go get a job because it's not worth all the risk I'm going to take. The second thing. You know, the second thing, Tom, that that one of the one of the tax incentives that we put forth uh, for myself allowed me to start self insuring myself. Right. So we put this one tax plan together where I get to do a write off. But now I'm building this insurance policy for myself so that if something happens to me or to my business, I don't end up becoming a burden on the government. I don't become a burden on insurance. I become my own burden. Well, and, and your employees and, and you don't and your employees don't lose their jobs because exactly. you're protecting you're, you're, you're protected now where it would have been cost prohibitive for you to be protected otherwise. And so, I mean, and this is and this is the government's reasoning and it actually started with farmers. Right. It's uh, it started in the Midwest, this particular tax um, benefit that look, farmers, they have real swings, ups and downs. Right. And so they need to protect themselves. So then they put in this law. Well, of course, when they put in the law for farmers, they have to, by law, they have to put it in for everybody. Okay, well, it's good because when I look at this tax benefit, for example, when I was looking at it for you, I'm going, look, you have all of this risk and it's an enormous amount of risk. And you felt it before, right? I mean, you felt this risk before. You, you've been subject to that risk before. And so now you're protected in the future and you're going, how is this a bad thing? I mean, this is something, yeah, it's a great tax benefit, but all the government is saying is, look, we're protecting employees, we're protecting the business, we're helping to encourage business to grow. Yep. No, absolutely true. Um, and, and so one of the points I really want everyone to walk away from this and understand is that when the wealthy are not paying taxes, they're actually doing something with their money that the government has decided is worth more to them, the government, than their tax money. So when Jeff Bezos, I did a whole episode where I broke down Amazon, their contribution to the economy and why they're not paying taxes. And yes, they're getting a massive, massive rebate on their R&D, their research and development. But listen, guys, you're able to go online and order a package and get same day delivery. You're saving a ton of money through your online purchases. Um, Amazon's created over, I'm forgetting the exact numbers now, but I think it's over 250,000 people that sell over $100,000 a year worth of inventory thanks to Amazon. They've created multiple, multiple millionaires. Guess what? All those people are paying taxes. All the sales, there's taxes. So there was another thing, right? A huge, huge uprising in New York, right? About why, why would we give them all this money 
And and so what we look at what Virginia did. Virginia came in and gave them a big tax incentive and said, come on in. Right. I think, uh, again, don't quote me. You have to go back and listen to the episode because I had the exact numbers. But it was like one and a half billion dollars in incentives. So immediately someone's like, oh, that's ridiculous. One and a half billion. They're already making so much money. Well, when you look at the math, Virginia expects to make four billion out of it. And it's like. Why? Why wouldn't you do that deal on a personal basis? Well, that's that, that. That's what. That's what gets me going. Let's say you and I did a deal, and you said, "Tom, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go out and I'm going to bring in, uh, for you, I'm going to bring in, um, five hundred thousand dollars, and out of that five hundred thousand dollars, I'd like to keep a hundred thousand dollars. Are you okay with that? I'm going. I have four hundred thousand dollars of free money." And that's exactly what was going on in New York and Virginia with Amazon. This was not, it, it's not that they were giving money that they already had. All they were doing was sharing the tax revenue that came down the road. So this is money they didn't have in the first place, right? And they would never have. So New York, not only does New York out all those thousands of jobs, but they're out a substantial amount of tax revenue because some Congress people and 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 politicians decided, oh, well, that's horrible that we're going to do a business deal with Amazon. And that's really all it is. It's just the government doing a business deal with a company. That's all it is. Well, so the second argument to that was made by a friend of mine. And I remember listening to it. I, I didn't know how to reply. So I'll just bring it out here. And that argument was that, listen, people were afraid that if Amazon comes down and comes in there, they're going to bring so much, this is literally the argument, so much economic development and so much boom that the prices of the houses, the cost of living there, everything will go up and that the people currently living there will get pushed out. And I'm sitting there listening to this and I'm like, it's called evolution. It, you, you're literally stopping development, progress, growth at the risk of those who are not willing to grow alongside of it being hurt by it. And, and, and what is your take on that? Well, the, the challenge is, is that those are two different issues. Okay. So one is a business deal with Amazon. The other is, um, you know, gentrification and, and, and it's like San Francisco. I mean, San Francisco, average worker cannot live within 30 minutes of San Francisco. They can't, they, they've been priced out. Okay, great. So th now you've got all this economic development. Use some of that money to develop low income housing. Use some of that money to put in some, 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 some places, some, you know, give some tax benefits so that developers will come in and produce this housing so that you don't drive them out. I mean, you, you've got all this money now because of this economic development yeah, the, the problem is, is the politicians get greedy. And so they go, oh, well, we're going to use all this. Well, what are you using it for? Use it for the people who would have been displaced. But that's a whole different issue, right? In doing a deal that, that's a good business deal. No, absolutely. So, so when it comes to, you know, personally for me, guys, I just love to lean on examples of myself. My, um, we were at, uh, I was at an event Recently, I've, I made a whole episode about this with Brad Sumrock, and he was up there and he made a joke. He was talking about Tom and he said his mission and goal in life, right? And, and when he said this, I laughed so much because I, I had already been there and I was like, dude, that is like the worst feeling in the world. He was like, I wanted to pay a million dollars in taxes because that would have told me I've earned enough money, blah, blah, blah. And he's telling this and I'm like, man, been there, done that. Like, that is not fun. And he goes, I talked to Tom and Tom just started laughing and said, are you insane? That that's the worst goal in life you could ever have. You should make it your goal to never pay taxes again. But he, so of course you could, he, Tom, you could hear in the audience. Okay. You could hear these people that are there to learn how to make money and be wealthier go, <gasps> you know, cause it's cause the way the society is building this, but then break it down. So I broke it. I, I was there literally to learn cause I went there cause Tom said, Go there because you're going to learn a new tax strategy. And I'm, I'm there to learn how to never pay taxes again. But I broke it down and I started really thinking about it. So, you know, we've talked about some of the areas where the government really gives you tax credits. This is These are the areas where the wealthy are able to get away with taxes. A lot of them are in business, right? So when you do the appropriate investing, the government rewards you as a partnership because they know in the future they're going to get a lot more out of that. So going back to Amazon's example, all of that R&D has led to so many jobs, 
right? So many jobs in the United States. All of that R&D has led to so much increase in revenue, states' revenue, sales taxes. I mean, we could keep going. No one wants to talk about that. What about the- What about, what about all the, the employees paying income tax? Yes, what about all the employees paying tax, right? No one wants to talk about that. No one wants to credit Amazon with that. So then, so you got these business, right? So the topic of this podcast was how to, how to rich people not pay taxes. Well, a lot of them became rich because they're involved in businesses, entrepreneurship, and there's a lot of tax advantages because if they weren't there, I'm out. There's no reason for me to do this or I'm gonna move to Singapore where it's more, more likely for me to do it. Um, the, the, the next big one, guys, if you really wanna know how Donald Trump doesn't pay taxes, real estate. And, and I don't wanna talk about this and make it sound like I'm a big expert because Tom opened my eyes to this, like I think it was like a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago, we're on the phone with Tom. I'm on the phone with Tom and I'm and he, he, he says something and finally it clicks and I got so upset. I'm like, Tom, why didn't you tell me this like three years ago? Turns out he did, I just chose to ignore it. And there's nothing he can do about that. But um, this is crazy. You can buy real estate right now and get this massive write-off right on year one. So Tom, explain why that's a good thing because people will say hey you're wealthy you're buying more property you're going to make more money from the property why should you get a write-off for that well the the theory is and i actually think this one's a little over the top so <laughs> i i think it's a little too good right um you know from a policy standpoint still the theory is look if we give you an, an incentive to go invest in real estate what are you going to do what what's going to happen we're going to have more apartment buildings built I mean, look at all the apartments that have been built and how what a, a um, challenge that people had with where were they going to live in a, in a decent place. And all of this has happened with tax incentives. So you're saying, look, if you go serve other people, if you go, it's, it's kind of like um, if you buy your own house, you're just serving yourself. Right. That's it. So you get very little tax benefit. But if you go buy build houses or buy houses or build apartment buildings for other people to live in so that you're serving more people, you're going to get a bigger, much bigger tax benefit. The same is true. Let's say, let's say you go buy commercial buildings. Well, you know, you go buy a commercial building, that means somebody else is going to build a commercial building, right? So I was looking at buying a commercial building and who was I buying it from? Somebody who was going to go build a new building, right? And so it, it creates this development and it's not the to me, it's not just the jobs that come from it. It's really more, we need that for the economy to grow for the, you know, and then that produces more revenue to the government. So, you know, it is a little supply side economics. I get that. But at the same time, understand that the basically the way the law works is if you consume your income, you're going to pay tax on it. But if you reinvest the income, either in your business or in real estate or in agriculture or in energy or something that the government wants you to invest it in, then you're not going to pay taxes. And it's, it's that simple. Consume it, pay taxes, invest it, don't. It's like a summary to the entire episode. Uh, I love it. <clears throat> it's so true. The biggest point I wanted everyone here to take away, and this is why I had Tom on, is that the rich don't pay taxes. Absolutely. But they're not evil because of it. They're actually investing into the economy in a way that is defined by the very government that is accusing them for being evil. It's the stupidest pattern. They're doing what they're told to do to help the economy grow. In exchange, they're getting an incentive for it so that they do more of it. The government's growing, the economy's growing, and yet they're being villain vilified for having done that. So right now, the impact that I could have on the economy, the world, the country, is far greater if I take the money I've made and invest it in a way the government wants versus pay them a one time. So this comes back to the question of if you could make $100,000 from me right now versus if you could make 50,000 a year for the next 50 years, which one would you choose? Well, the government has said we would rather make a bunch more money over longer term. So invest, please. We don't want the short term gain. And so what and, and Tom said it right there. It's business. It's real estate, it's agriculture, it's energy. These are some of the main fields. So I haven't even, you know what? I've not even scratched the surface with Tom yet. Because every time I say, Tom, I need more strategies, he turns around and says, you need to go make more money first before we deploy these strategies because you don't need all of these. You have enough to do what you're doing with right now. And so 
I've saved millions of dollars. I'm incredibly grateful to Tom for it. I'm not evil. Uh, all of you listening right now, you know I give back a ton of money. My wife and I, in just the last three to four years, have invested $650,000 into our own nonprofit without ever raising a dollar from outside people. So this whole narrative of rich or evil, it, it's stupid. And it's completely holding us back. And I wish that the politicians would stop using it to rile people's emotions up because it's simple and it's easy to understand. It's really easy to say rich people don't pay taxes, hence rich people are evil. It's stupid and it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and you could be in the same boat. So here's a couple of things coming up. First of all, Tom, um, can you drop your URL? If someone's listening right now and they're like, I want to be you know, rich and not pay taxes. Um, where can they go to talk to one of your, you know, preferred advisors? Where they can they, where can they go to schedule a call? Just go to our website, wealthability.com, wealthability.com, just spelled just like it sounds. And there's a button that'll come right up and said, schedule a call. And uh, you know, the whole, the whole point here is, you know, the reason for the name wealthability is it's your ability to create wealth, right? That's our job is to help you use your ability to create wealth. Cause what happens is, is that we tend to turn our money over to other people and, and say, you go do it for me because wall street said for years and years, you're too dumb to handle your money. So let us handle it for you, which we know is just a great wall street lie. So what, what we really want to do is we want to understand also that I can't do anything to reduce your taxes. You have to do it all. So, but what I can do is I can tell you what, you need to do in order to change your taxes, right? It's just like you said, you, we talked about real estate three years ago. You weren't ready for it. Okay. When you were ready for it, you're going great. Now I'm ready for it. I want to go do it. And my wife and I want to do this. And so great, let's go do this. All right, great. Then this is what you need to do, but you guys have to go do the real estate. You have to go do it. All I can do is tell you, this is what you do. And this is how you do it. This is where you find it. Yeah. Well, I mean, but you know, you're downplaying your contribution to that because you also know the whole industry. So I was able to ask you, okay, where's the one place I can go to learn it? You said, go here, buy this, do that. And so that, that alone was worth a ton. So listen, everyone go to wealthability.com. The URL is on, also going to be in our show notes. Go to onicpodcast.com. Make sure you leave us a great review. If you're watching on YouTube, come on, give Tom some love, leave a comment below, click subscribe, click the bell icon, click the thumbs up icon. And also I'm not done with Tom yet. So we have another episode coming out in the coming weeks. It's a Wednesday episode where Tom's going to share with you 10 strategies to deploy in your own life to save money on taxes, 10 ways entrepreneurs can save money on taxes. You'll be able to take that advice, apply it right away. But right now, if you want to kind of jump the gun and you want to get ahead and you want to talk to someone who can help you figure out what all the things that normal CPAs just don't know, take it from a guy who lost, you know, I've calculated how much I lost and it pains me to say it. It's about $5 million. Now that would have grown, so it's probably more, but I actually lost $5 million in hard cash because I did not work with Tom years before I, the, before I did. That's, that's the cost of lack of education. So go to wealthability.com, sign up for that call with one of Tom's preferred advisors, figure out how you can save money on taxes while helping your country more, while being patriotic. So with that said, again, onicpodcast.com, leave a comment below. Tom, thank you as always. You are awesome. I hope a lot of people go and book those calls and, and learn more from you. And everybody remember, when life pushes you, stand straight, smile, and push it the heck back. I will see you on the next episode of The Fighting Entrepreneur. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singal.